Welcome to a new video on my home automation and Node-RED series and today I want to talk about a nice integration which I recently finished and this involves uh, using some of the devices that I've reviewed previously one of them is a Reolink IP camera I'm also using an RF button this is what I'm going to mount outside at the gate so somebody can ring me if they arrive and of course the third thing that I'm going to be using is a Google Home Hub because what I want to do is that when somebody presses the doorbell at the front gate I get an announcement and I also get the picture of the front gate and let's see how it works I push the button there is someone at the door First I get the announcement and after a couple of seconds I get the picture of the gate. I wouldn't say that this is the final solution because all I'm getting here is a screenshot so this is not a moving image. I think it would be ideal that in the future I actually get the, the video feed from the IP camera but that's not really easy to do because uh, you can't just uh, put the RSTP stream onto the Google Home. So what I would ideally need to do is uh, uh, run some sort of server on the Raspberry Pi which actually converts the RSTP into a MP4 stream and then give the MP4 stream to the Google Home which hopefully can display. If anyone knows how to do that please leave a comment in the comment section. And at the end, um, after about half a minute, then it just basically cancels that screen so it goes back to the, uh, to the default screen which is you know showing pictures for me. So let's see how I did it. The integration is relatively simple although I have run into a couple of uh, tricks in the you know whilst I'm making I was making this uh, whole flow work uh, and I'm going to talk about all these tricks uh, um, throughout this video and in order to talk to Google Home in the past I used a, a a node which is called the uh, Google Home Notify which was able to speak a text to Google Home but I had actually there is another one which can do a lot more and this is what I started using in this flow which is this Node, Rib, uh, node Red Contribcast V2 so these are the blue ones that you he uh, see so the first thing that happens is obviously I need to get the uh, image from the real in camera and I've mentioned in the previous video that all the real in cameras that are not battery powered they provide an HTTP URL where you can get the image I'm going to put the link um, to their knowledge base how this link gets generated but um, well it's basically just an HTTP call as you can see I've uh, also added the basic authentication um, well technically I also have the, the user ID and the password in the URL as well and the return is a binary buffer. I'm not really sure if binary buffer is uh, used in that's the standard setup or not, but okay, so it works. So once the, uh, the image is received via HTTP, I'm going to save it to a local file. And what I'm doing here is I'm saving it to a, um, um, a folder, which is the node red static. So this is a folder uh, that is set up in my settings.js so I can access this JPEG using you know just a simple URL on port 1880 so on the node red page let's say that yep that's so obviously override the file and use the default encoding so that would create the JPEG image and parallel to this one the other thing I'm doing is I'm making Google Home to say a message that there is someone at the door and to say a text to Google Home you have to send this a special type of message so as you can see in the host you provide the IP address of your Google Home device I'm using an IP address and I have set this IP as a, uh, a fixed IP in my router so it always gets this IP from the DHCP of the router and in the payload you say it's a type TTS uh, and that's the text there's someone at the door okay you can set the speed and you can also set the language and um, the front gate that's what appears on the google home display of course if you have a you know normal google home that that uh, 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 that is optional and wouldn't make a difference anyway so that's the text and you just pass it onto the google home i mean you can specify the host here but i've also specified it in the in the payload as well 
or in the message object as well. So whilst we are trying to get the image and we are saving the image, we are also going to uh, you know, play the enhancement and at least we will have some time for the enhancements to complete. The first um, a problem comes really here is because what I noticed is if I keep saving the file with the, using the same file name, uh, the Google Home is not going to uh, pick up the, or the, you know, the Google Home display is not going to pick up the most recent image because I think it also caches the image. So you tell them that, you know, display this JPEG and <clears throat> it's going to just, you know, show the date, uh, JPEG that it, it has already shown. So it's not picking up the, uh, the, the latest one. So I added this function node, which creates a random file name. And then basically the file name, as you can see, is the, it's like gate underscore and the year, month, day, hour, minute, and second dot JPEG. So, you know, it just becomes unique every time. And what I'm doing next is I am uploading it to my NAS as well. And that was another trick which I had to do. Actually, I can modify this flow now, but uh, uh, what I've been using in the past is that my Raspberry Pi had a self-signed certificate. And what seems to be the problem, or what seemed to be the problem in the past, is that if I try to provide a URL for uh, the Google Home, which is on a self-signed certificate, it just wouldn't play the image. So I was getting an error all the time. So I thought, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy it, upload it to my NAS, and the NAS also creates a known uh, website. So if I upload the file in a, speci a specific directory, then I can just uh, access that image using a special, you know, just a simple HTTP URL. So this is why I'm uploading it to the NAS. So if you have, if you are not using a certificate or you have a proper certificate, this might not be an issue for you. So um, I'm creating this random file. I'm passing this random file to my NAS and I have a, a bash script which is basically just you know just opening the FTP connection and and then I think it put a does a put or whatever the uh, the FTP command in in Linux to upload a file and of course as you can see I'm uploading the message payload so the first parameter of the script is going to be the the, the randomized file name so that is going to take some time while I upload the data to NAS. And I would say normally it's like a five seconds, but sometimes it won't be able to connect that fast. So this is why I added this seven second delay. And um, I added this delay just to make sure that the Google Home has time to finish the announcement, which it normally uh, is because you know, getting the image takes about a second or so, you know, saving, uploading takes a couple of seconds. So I add another five seconds. And, and in here, I generate another message where we display the image. So again, as you can see, the message, the host is the IP. Now in the payload, we are sending a type, which is the media. And then the media itself, it has a URL. And uh, that's the URL that is published by my NAS. And of course, uh, at the end, I'm adding the message.payload. So that's the same file name, which is getting um, used in the upload script. And of course, that becomes the file name on the server. And the title is a front gate. That's, it gets displayed as an overlay on the image as well. And then we send this to the Google Hub. And as you can see, even probably the last time it happened, I got an error. And that's why it's important to have the message.payload because you can see what the error is. So it could have happened again that for some reason I wasn't able to upload it to a NAS. So I'm send, I was sending a URL, which was actually invalid URL. I mean, yeah, you just have to experience with it. Again, if you don't have to do this whole, you know, NAS upload rubbish, then it's just going to become much easier. So, and the output of this Google Hub, so once the, uh, the image is displayed, I want to make sure that after a certain amount of time, the display returns to the default setting, which is, you know, showing your images or whatever. So I wait another half a second, sorry, half a minute, and I send another payload, which is, uh, that's close. And that's basically stops the, you know, the current media. I mean, in this case, the image and the screen just returns to the normal uh, image slider and 
I'm sending that to Google Hub as well. And honestly, that's pretty much it. I'm going to copy and paste this part of the flow and make it available so that there will be a link in the video description so you can play around with these different nodes and um, I mean as I said based on how your system is set up whether you have a size certificate or not this flow it might look a little bit different uh, for you but at least I've shown you the main component how you can get the image how you save it and then how you can get the text message and the image out to the Google Home. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next video.